Prior to their match, Anishgiri asserted that despite his respect for Nihal Saran's speed chess play, he was eager to play Nihal in rapid and felt that they were evenly matched in their semi-final in the Chess.com Global Championship. But I think that this time control is maybe, I, I don't know of course him well enough, but I think this is the time control where we probably match our strengths. I, I hope so at least. I think probably in the classical I would think I'm still stronger, in the blitz he is stronger already, but maybe this rapid format is where we are evenly matched, but maybe I'm wrong and I'll, I'll get uh, smoked, you know, we'll see. But I, I, I do think that uh, I should have a good shot. The first game showed the kind of precise conversion on excellent opening preparation that Giri is famous for, and he won smoothly in a fine game. If h3 is played, do not take it with your pawn. That's the only trick Black has left, but there is a resignation. Anish Giri wins game one and a very deserved victory for the Holland player. Yeah, this is a great win for Anish. I mean, getting the momentum right into the match gives him confidence. Then, however, Nihal immediately struck back with a game that was just as convincing as Anish's initial victory. This was but the first comeback from Nihal, who seemed absolutely unfazed by stress throughout the match. And he can't go to the queen side because I wanted to see one to be rook c2 check. The king's in the corner now. And he goes rook but a7. A7 is over. That pawn is promoted. Rook a6. Rook a6. That's, That's game. That's it. Nihal Saren takes game two here. Anish Giri just trying to find the resignation button. There it is. And Nihal, you got a little head nod. He ties it up. Yeah, that was, that was super impressive. I mean, such a clean game, getting almost nothing from the opening, but a little bit of an advantage. Two more turbulent games ensued, and in both, Nihal put Giri under a lot of pressure and was winning objectively at points. Resourceful play from Giri and some gaffes from Nihal kept the match even. In the final moments of the day, Nihal was even lucky not to lose the end game as a blunder allowed Giri to pick up an extra knight. E6, Levy. Yeah, king f6? Oh, king f6. He's winning. Yeah, he's completely winning. Knight Wait. e3 or something, king. I mean, some move. It's not that easy, though. White's going to go f4 if you move the knight. F4, oh, f4, f4, f4. Oh, blunders f4. Oh, my God. And, and, and oh, knight d4, f5. And then g5, e5 check, and it's a draw. Oh, No, but the win was so hard. I yeah. didn't see the win. I didn't see the win there. Oh, and Nihal pulls it off. Yes, now you just have to know. Oh, how you, but Anish is just, he is just kicking himself right there. This is a, <laughs> Like, oh, he was hoping for a king up one pre move. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, you got to go up and down here. Folks. He's trying every down. every up trick in the book. What was that? Yeah, and he's gonna stick around. He usually gets up and leave. I, I've never, I've never seen that. This might be the wildest play. finish to like a Nihal Saren game I've ever seen. Yeah, Nihal is a bit rough today. Yeah, making a lot of very uncharacteristic kind of time pressure mistakes. But two to two is a, is a no, fantastic the, way to finish. I'm the seeing the, the computer when it was really difficult. I, I'm not blaming Geary for a sec. He's going to sure. be blaming, blaming himself. I'm not blaming Anish for a single second for not finding the win. Heading into day two, Nihal could no longer be considered an underdog against Geary by any observer. And it was clear anything could happen. Just as on the first day, Giri opened up the match with a very convincing game, maybe his best of the match, as his strike with 15 rook takes h5 and then knight takes e5 earned two brilliant annotations from game review and claimed a big advantage. He never let it go. Fabiano Caruana deemed it a perfect game from Giri. Escape via those dark squares that can just like slide across. The knights are controlling some squares, but not quite enough. And yeah, this is, uh, this is game over. This was a perfect game by Anish. This was a beautiful victory. And it goes to show that maybe you shouldn't deviate as early as move one, because when you play an opening like one knight c6, you get yourself in trouble from the very start. And for now, Anish Giri takes the lead once more. You see game one, you see game five. He is an early riser. For the second time in the match, Nihal was down, but he proved himself the comeback kid. Five head opening play in this game and throughout the match particularly impressed Fabiano Caruana, who has long frustratedly bashed his head against Giri's renowned prep. Nihal got a nearly winning position out of the opening, and the commentators were virtually begging Giri to sacrifice his queen for two minor pieces and practical chances, as Magnus Carlsen had once famously and successfully done against Giri. And if you play bishop e4, this is the queen sack I was about to highlight is rook f4, takes, takes. You have two minor pieces and a pawn for the queen. This is anything but clear. You know, I do like this decision practically. Ultimately, Nihal closed out game two accurately and beautifully with the brilliant 28 bishop to h6, which retied the match. Anytime soon, you can make other moves. You can make rook oh, before. Oh my. Oh, uh, but that that's clinical. I think oh. that's actually checkmate, isn't it? Like, how do you avoid checkmate in this position? That's so nasty. 
that that's a brilliant move. If we'll just show if G takes H6, it's checkmate in three. <laughs> and <laughs> the king runs away, but this is getting just more and more upsetting if you're Nishgiri. He took a one game lead and immediately he gets destroyed by Nihal Saren. And that's he, game. Yeah, he didn't want to look at this position anymore. Look, he didn't develop any pieces. After these turbulent battles, the players reined things in with two more solid draws in game seven and eight, as the players proved willing to settle things in Armageddon. Geary had the greater desire for the black pieces, as his bid of 12 minutes and 57 seconds secured the draw odds. Nihal, meanwhile, came in with a big bid of 14 minutes and 15 seconds, showing clearly that he wanted to play white and he wanted to win. Complex play saw the advantage change hands in the early moves, but things clarified after Geary sacrificed his pawn on b6 to simplify matters. He was grabbing his forehead. He knows <laughs> this is a very tense spot because this might shape the rest of the game. And he's grabbed it. Okay, and Bishop d4. We actually saw knight to c4, not your great mouse slip rook c4. No, he puts the knight on c4. He trades the knights. That's a big plus for, for Nihal. He hasn't had to move his knight on a3. That knight got offered an escape route. It just got traded. But now the c3 pawn is under fire. It's under right. very serious fire. And the obvious move, bishop d4, allows a rook infiltration to c2 after the rook trade. This is where I remind everybody, all that Anish needs is a draw. So his strategy changes fundamentally. I th still think he's got great chances to hold this. In the end game, he retained good drawing chances and even managed to even up the game on the clock. Nihal transferred his extra queenside pawn to one on the king side entering a rook in game that was certainly drawn, but was not easy. These pawns are weak on the surface, but look at how the king can defend both of them from f6. In yep. a way, this is like an ideal arrangement. The rules for pawn structures in rook endgames are totally different. Yeah, yeah, no, the, sometimes you have the split pawns, and actually it means if you want to make a pass pawn, you're going to need to trade more pawns than you'd like. The more pawns that get traded oh. off the board, I mean, the more it helps on But obviously you shouldn't trade indiscriminately. If you take out f4 here, white gets the connected pawns. I think that's a difficult one to defend. If I'm Anish, I'm keeping the tension and playing rook c1 or rook c5. Mm -hmm. He's correct to invest his clock here. Rook C1 is played. And yeah, you also have to watch a mouse slip, by the way. He's investing time, but he's got four and a half minutes. So <laughs> Plenty of time. He does have a lot of time. And Just as the draw appeared clear to Geary and the commentators, Nihal found an amazing sequence to infiltrate with his rook and break with the move of the day, pawn to F5 on move 103. The one pawn up rook endgame was a winning one as Geary's king was cut off and he shortly resigned. Oh, he's missed rook f6 and king g4. Now the king's going up the board. Oh Hang my on. god, the evil bar is showing a win. Rook h1, rook h1, you have to cut the king off, but then I think rook... rook h1, yeah. And then rook h6. Apparently the check. winning move is f5. You trade the pawns and wow. then the king being cut off is actually significant. And if you trade the rooks in that position, at the end of the line... You're losing. There's king f8 and you lose oh a king and pawn endgame. Oh my end god, apparently Anish had to play a well-timed e6, e5, sacking the pawn temporarily. That was an impossible move. But does he have to find f5? I think he does, because if he plays rook h6 to pave the way for his king, mm -hmm. Anish can throw his rook on f1. I think that might hold. f5 is a winning move, and, and, and Nihal can send that that winning move is somewhere. Yeah, he's spending he's some time. It. Unbelievable. This, I think Anish should have tried to keep the tension, make Nihal be the one to take on G5. I think practically that would have been a lot easier to draw. And you can see the, just the, I don't even know what the word is, devastation. That is a lot of money. Nihal Sarin is into the finals. Unbelievable turn of events as Anish Giri loses oh, on the board. There. A rook end game. And we do see that look of elation from Nihal Sarin. I already Congrats to him, but unfortunately, that's the end of the tournament for Grandmaster Anish Giri. Nihal Sarin now heads to the Chess.com Global Championship Finals to play Wesley So. At just 18 years old, Nihal's time to shine on one of the chess world's biggest stages is now.